uh, can uh, come up and uh, d g give his talk on the interventional treatment of hokum, overview of technique and results. Thank you very much, uh, chairpersons and team from the Hyderabad to invite me for this uh, lecture. I will just uh, try to brief uh, interventional treatment of hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy and there has been a lot of changes in the uh, delivery or the, uh, of the techniques which have been, so I will briefly go through. So hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is a, uh, classically been defined as a hypertrophy of the myocardium greater than 1.5 centimeter without an identifiable cause, other etiology of left ventricular hypertrophy such as long standing hypertension or aortic stenosis. Now what happens actually is a myocardial disarray and which is responsible and incidence is 1 in 500 in normal population. A myocardial disarray, this is shown in the histological slide and it is autosomal uh, dominant uh, transmission and it is passed from affected males and females both and, and the disease does not skip the paradigm generations. Uh, the stimulus of this uh, uh, pathology is not very clear. This is our intracellular calcium metabolism. It could be neural crest disorder and papillary muscle malposition and misorientation. And it also has implication in the treatment according to the anatomical changes. This cartoon explains uh, what happens with this uh, asymmetrical hypertrophy that uh, abets across the mitral valve crosses the outflow and it causes the gradient to develop and this could be various uh, variants either it is subaortic which is the commonest variety sometimes it mid ventricular and uh, apical variety which is not treated by um, ablations and it could be diffuse. So its pathophysiology includes dynamic LV outflow track obstruction diastolic dysfunction which at later stage, myocardial ischemia because of the relative hypertension and mitral regurgitation and eventually arrhythmias which are responsible for the fatal outcomes. So this is the histological uh, samples which is showing between the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy first and uh, normal to the dilated cardiomyopathy showing the difference in the thickness of the chamber. So pathophysiology also specifies that it is a dynamic uh, obstruction, left ventricle outflow tract gradient, which is increased and de according to the preload, uh, like decreased preload, it will increase the uh, obstruction and decreased afterload will also increase the obstruction or uh, gradient and it is increased contractly. So eventually they increase the gradient. So it's the venturi effect where the anterior mitral valve leaflet and cord is sucked into the outflow and it increases the obstruction and resulting in eccentric jet of the mitral regurgitation at mid and late systole. So there are some uh, variants of the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Most common location as I mentioned was subaortic, septal and anterior wall and asymmetrical hypertrophy septum and anterior wall is 70 percent statistically. Basal septum is 15 to 20 percent Concentric LVH is also found in 5, 8 to 10 percent. Apical or lateral wall is the common, uh, uncommon, least common. And in Japanese and Asia, uh, the incidence is much higher. And this is commonly associated with giant T-well inversion on the lateral leads or a spike-like left ventricular cavity when you see in the angiogram. These are the cartoons showing the normal heart. And this is the subaortic obstruction which is seen. And this is on the echo of one of our patients where we show the obstruction is in the mid cavity, which is one of the less common variety. But this was later on dealt with the um, septal ablation. So their common presentation is dyspnea, chest pain, dizziness, and fainting. A triad of these three includes the, relates to the mortality or long-term results of this uh, disease process. Fatigue, palpitation, and sudden death this could be the commonest uh, presentation in the youngs, youngsters, sportly sports person, and many time 
as sudden cardiac death is the only presentation uh, of this disease manifestation. So implication of the LV gradient, outflow threat gradient in excess of 30 millimeters HE an important cause of the symptoms and severe outflow threat gradient can be responsible for dyspnea, chest pain and syncope. LV gradient is an independent predictor of the disease progression and adverse outcome including sudden death. So ejection systolic murmur, uh, clinically we find at left external edge, it's uh, present and at least uh, with severe obstruction and majority of the patient. ECG shows left ventricular hypertrophy, commonly deep T inversion. Echocardiogram is classical and very diagnostic, asymmetrical septal hypertrophy of LV outflow gradient. MRI has recently been introduced and has shown abnormal septal thickening. Cardiac catheterization usually is not required for the diagnosis of the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. But left ventricular gradient at rest and provoked by ectopics, by nitro, uh, inotropes and vasodilators. This is sometimes done before the septal ablation if uh, you don't have classical gradient at rest. So this is one of the typical ECGs, but many times you fail to see this type of ECG even with the severe obstruction as we have seen in some of our patients. So this is on the echo where you can see the septal is nearly 2.5 millimeter uh, cent uh, centimeter in diameter which is quite thick and the high risk subject this is important because of the long term disease planning males family history of sudden cardiac death hypotension on exercise and if you have symptoms or past history of syncope so broken barrel phenomena is just when you are in cath lab you see the premature ventricular contraction augmented preload increase the contractility and in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, the worsens and LV out obstruction and increases the pressure gradient, which is reversed to the normal pattern. Normal subjects following PVC shows a proportional increase in aortic systolic and LV systolic pressures. So this is one of the examples where you can see the premature. I hope I have ectopics, and then there you can see the increase in gradient. This is one of the early ways when the angiography was done before the echo was in uh, vogue and this is just to demonstrate that uh, I have done some work in past where we have seen this uh, these thick septum between the two ventricles simultaneous LV and RV. We don't have to do these procedures now because of the better uh, echocardiographic pictures which we obtain. Atrial fibrillation is poorly, poorly tolerated due to impaired uh, left ventricular relaxation where atrial kick becomes very, very important in ventricular filling. So these patients f uh, do f very badly if they develop atrial fibrillation and it is recommended after uh, TE followed by medical electrical cardioversion and this is the preferred approach to reverse them to the previous hemodynamic status. So the management, uh, medical management includes the negative inotropism which is used by beta blockers, calcium channel blockers and disuperamide. Amiodrine has been used to avoid the arrhythmias. It has reduced the arrhythmias, but it has its own limitation. Pacemaker reverses the sequence of cardiac contraction from apex to base, which reduces the degree of outflow obstruction. Long-term success is questionable. But we have some anecdotal data to suggest that some of the cases have done very well with even with the pacing. Myectomy surgery is effective in reducing overgrowth of the septum and, uh, and the gradient. However, the mortality varies from 2% to 25% depend on the uh, series and the larger center which specializes in the surgery, uh, mortality is nearly only 1% to 2%. Interventions, as I mentioned, uh, dual chamber pacemaker, septal ablation, surgical myomectomy with or without valve replacement, automatic implantable cardioverter defibrillators for the uh, prevention of sudden death, especially in high risk subgroups. And eventually, if patient goes to dilated state and they need a cardiac transplantation. Dual chamber pacemaker has been used. Birth of the septal ablation, I will just uh, narrate this. In the year 1993, a 69 years old patient with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy developed anterior wall infarction. It was in Sigward's follow up in the UK. And her routine echocardiogram revealed dramatic abolition of LV gradient when the patient developed infarction. So that's how the idea came that this can be taken care. 
and June 1994, Sigvard injected a small amount of uh, alcohol in carefully selected first septal artery of a 67 years old woman and it was described as profoundly aggressive by some of the eminent commentators at that time and mortality was less than 2 persons with arrhythmias and this was documented. This happened immediately after the ablation. You reduce immediately the gradient and the end point is easily available. This is one of our patients where ECG does not show classical LVH. There is LVH on the V2, V3 but there may be because of the rotation of the heart. You cannot see the left sided forces on V5, V6. And this was immediately after the ablation. It developed right bundle branch block, some STD changes and anterior lead suggestive of ischemia and his uh, uh, CK was in thousands. And this was uh, the example which, which I do in most of the patients. We put a pacemaker in ventricle and keep it on a uh, fixed rate of 40. So just to see uh, ventricular ectopics and confirm this broken borough phenomena. So National Institute of Clinical Excellence they observed non-surgical ablation of the septum is potentially a less risky procedure with a shorter recovery time. However, it may increase the risk of dangerous abnormal heart arrhythms. Some patients may require pacemaker after the procedure. And this is one of the patients what we do. We selectively find this uh, artery which we want to do it uh, for the ablation. And when we go to that artery, we uh, uh, inject the uh, agitated contrast and do a contrast echo to confirm that the artery which we are going to use is uh, supplying to that area. And this is uh, when we have uh, got a balloon dilated, you can inject the dye and it shows you, it shows you the distribution of the dye in that area and that helps to find that we are going to the right place. So echo contrast has drastically reduced the complication rate and the excessive use of the alcohol and to select the number of arteries and the largest uh, studies from some centers have shown lower and lower amount of alcohol, even less than one milli ml would be enough to effectively uh, achieve our goal. I have observed one thing very similar that if you can see this is the patient where we have done ablation but this artery is blocked the flow. But uh, I notice very often that you look at the, all the septal arteries and which of the septal arteries are contracting during the systole, probably supplying to the tightest portion of the septum or the hypertrophied portion of the septum. I wish I can show that, it may not be so clear in this slide. So these are the usually enzymes go up most of the time and this is the, what happens. And echo gradient, usually you see immediately reduction in the gradient. And symptomatic improvement have been seen in four to six weeks. Most patients can continue, uh, discontinue beta blockers and calcium channel blockers. Arrhythmia monitoring is important. There have been arrhythmia immediately after the procedure and post-procedure uh, period. And AV block has been reported 10 to 20 percent and permanent patient was pacemaker was required. Now with most of the studies, around 10% patient still need pacemaker. Echocardiac gu guidance I've mentioned about it and recommended gradient is 50 at rest or provoked. And this is uh, an example for the surgical MACME. Alternatively, one can use uh, surgical map, my MACME. It reduces the gradient, increases the LV size. They were similar when they were compared to ASA and is slightly better in reduction of the gradients and comparison was further difficult because higher age group was used in septal ablation as compared to the surgical group. Alcohol ablation uh, uh, and uh, risk of long term arrhythmias due to in, uh, intramyocardial scar was more likely than epicardial scar which has been produced by septal MACME. ASA or septal ablation does not alter ICD intervention rate in high risk uh, patients over three years or long term follow up according to Charles. Our and their cohort of patients have not shown evidence of significant arrhythmias on the repeat holter monitoring. So in past few years approximately 3500 septal ablation have been performed worldwide much more than septal magnet does in 45 years. 
ASA is justified in resistant symptomatic patient with significant outflow obstruction with, without mitral valve abnormalities. This is very important where the surgical surgery does better. So alcohol septal ablation for the treatment uh, in the multicentral registry, variables that predict mortality after ablation include baseline ejection fraction, NYHA class, number of the septal arteries injected, post-ablation septal thickness, beta blocker use, and number of the ablation procedure. If the procedure was required more than once, the mortality was more. In addition, higher mortality in patient undergoing second procedure. So significant mass reduction has also been observed on MR, and these are the various new information which is coming up. So what are the other options we have? Coil embolization and microsphere or RF ablation has been attempted. So in PVA, polyvinyl ab uh, alcohol foam particles have been used in acute and three uh, years follow-up. In 18 patients, we were drug resistant, and the resting gradient reduced from 83 to 31, which was significant. O over a mean follow-up, uh, 44 months, all patients had symptomatic improvement. No complete heart block was observed as compared to ASA. Could be the, the damage is less and it is much less uh, small, smaller in fact. But I think uh, I, I had some experience in using our patients and I found the gradient reduction was not that much and we have to resort these patients to septal, alcohol septal ablation later. And, but unfortunately, after 2004, no further work has been available in literature. Either it was not effective, um, and I'm surprised in so many years why it has not been repeated further. So uh, in uh, coil embolization, echo IVAS reduced uh, reduction was 21 to 18 millimeters. LVO2 gradient decreased significantly, and coil embolization results in moderate reduction. Radio frequency ablation is another approach which has been tried. Like uh, most of the EP guys, what they do, they go for, uh, retrogradely from the aorta and try to ablate the area of the hypertrophied septum. And it has been attempted in 19 patients in the study. And 13 plus minus 10 radio frequency pulses was used. Sustained LV gradient reduction by 62%. Six minute walk improved. New York Heart Association class, um, classification improved. And, and uh, when they, in a, one of the recent editorials, they suggested after this article whether septal ablation cut, coil, or boil, and they suggested in the Durance study there was no AV block and after the uh, coil embolization, while in one of the Polish study from Lacob et al, they found 43% there was some uh, AV blocks and a modest LV gradient reduction. One out of 20 septal perforation was also documented in this study, second study, where this patient has a late cardiac death. RF ablation was specially recommended for children where the risk of arrhythmia is more. High risk of the heart block and need for pacemaker implant and alcohol septal ablation, and these are the markers where you can have more likelihood of ablation, uh, AV block, age more than 55, female gender, bowl of injection more than 2.5 or 2.9 ml, injection of more than one septal perforator, lack of use of contrast echocardiography, LBB on the baseline ECG, and the average need of pacemaker in was around 10%. Additional recommendation, around 10% of the patient undergoing ASA will develop permanent heart block and requiring pacemaker. Risk is higher for females and further studies are required to examine the long-term effect of septal ablation. IDC, ICDs are still indicated in high-risk patient. So coming to the, back to the natural history, many of these asymptomatic uh, who have mild symptoms which are increased in five to 10 years, annual mortality is still 3% in large referral centers and one year, 1% 1 with the patient uh, when all patients are included. SCD higher in children and clinical deterioration is a slow and percentage of severely symptomatic uh, symptoms increases with age. So protection for sudden cardiac uh, death, amiodron is good for reducing arrhythmias, however it has not shown any survival benefit. Implantable ICDs are still needed in at least in uh, high risk group. Main problem is that primary prevention is difficult 
whether the all patients should be given ICDs, and that's still limited to the high risk subgroup. And they, uh, some of the recent editorial, they try to uh, specify how we can justify the treatment and drug refractory patients of asymmetrical uh, hypertrophy and ACC, ECS additional requirements that septal hypertrophy thickness of 18 millimeter and resting or provocable gradient of 50 millimeters is acceptable. These criteria have been relaxed in view of the relative safety of the procedure and only 51 to 53 patients were uh, already taking beta blocker or calcium blocker or they were resistant cases out of 3,000 and the randomized study between septal ablation and myomectomy is recommended. However, uh, randomized control trial is not feasible due to low frequency of disease and low event rates after these interventions. Alternatively, a multicenter prospective registry would be reasonable to resolve this controversy. Meanwhile, ASA is reasonable therapeutic option even older patient with significant gradient and comorbidities, favorable coronary anatomy, and in absence of the mitral valve disease. So, uh, I will just skip this slide and the premier database, this is the very recent uh, comparative in hospital safety and cost of ASA versus surgical myomectomy. Uh, it was shown in January 2000 to uh, up to 30 June 2010, 242 uh, who underwent myomectomy at 97 hospitals and 163 patients who won underwent ablation at 37 hospitals. So this is the study they collected from the database, but uh, somehow it shows that how much is the volume of each center doing this procedure, and I think this will have implication on the results. Uh, but they recommended ASA is at par with myomectomy in hospital mortality of 0 to 5.4 percent. New onset hemodialysis is more in surgical group. Rate of stroke was uh, acceptable and pacemaker and ICD were 18.4 versus 13.6, uh, which is less in the surgery. In nutshell, advantage of mortality, length of stay, and cost of uh, ablation uh, had advantage. So if you go back to the one of the uh, earlier editorials from the Charles Knight, the profoundly aggressive procedure described by many eminent commentator, if carefully nurtured, the SIGWARD procedure is like so an infant terrible may enjoy the rather respectable uh, middle age. I would say that how true this uh, editorial comments were, which were more than 10 years ago. Thank you very much.